Kroger, the massive grocery store chain has announced that they intend on acquiring Albertsons for the small price of just $24.6 billion. Now this merger, if it were to go through, would have disastrous impacts on the cost of food for hundreds of millions of Americans across the country. But first it's important to understand and note that Kroger and Albertsons already have many subsidiary brands. So Kroger brands include Ralph's, Dillon's, Food for Less, Fred Meyer, Harris Teeter, King's Supers, Mariano's, and several more. Albertsons boasted by a 2015 merger with Safeway, or boosted I should say, with a 2015 merger with Safeway, has that chain in its stable along with Acme, Hagen, Jewel Osco, Shaw's, Pavilions, Vons, and many more. So there are already these major grocery conglomerates, right? Grocery stores or grocery chains, I should say, eating up smaller grocery chains. And that does what? It leads to a lack of competition. It creates a monopoly. And this potential merger would make things even worse. Now, congressional testimony this January from the National Grocers Association indicates that over 60% 60% of all American grocery sales are concentrated in just five companies. Amazon, Walmart, Kroger, Albertsons, and Ahold Del Hayes, a Dutch grocer that owns several brands like Giant Food Lion and Stop and Shop. Now, if Kroger and Albertsons were to merge, that merged company would control 16% of the national market. Okay, in some local markets, the merged company and Walmart combined would control upwards of 90% of the market. So it depends on where you are in the country. And that's really bad because if there's a monopoly in regard to these grocery stores, that means that they can charge whatever they want for the products they carry. And you're not gonna have very many options because even though there might be the illusion of options, you know, different branding when it comes to the store itself, it's really under the same umbrella, the same company in reality. Now, just look at how the leadership at Kroger and Albertsons talk about inflation. This is an important part of the story, I would argue, the most important, because this is what their whole objective is. Last summer, Kroger CEO Rodney McMullen said that. A little bit of inflation is always good in our business because customers don't overly react to increases in prices. That's a really interesting take because people are definitely reacting to the inflation, especially when it comes to putting food on the table for themselves and their families. But the thing is, people feel incredibly powerless because we have really not a two party system, but a one party pro corporate system in America that protects the price gouging that's currently taking place right now. Kroger CFO Gary Millerchip told shareholders in October, quote, we've been very comfortable with our ability to pass on the increases we've seen at this point, And we would expect that to continue to be the case, end quote. That's devastating. Yep. Okay, so there's two different issues here. One is monopoly power and, and two, is the corruption in our system related to inflation, okay? So and this is just a textbook case of it. So he's telling you, we're very comfortable passing on everything to you guys. Um, literally, that's exactly what he said. Now, what did they pass on to you guys? Uh, so egg prices are up 30.5%, that is, that's gigantic, yep. okay? Uh, chicken's up 17.2%, coffee's up 15.7%, and the list goes on and on. So now, Republicans and Democrats will tell you different things. Actually, Republicans and progressives, Democrats generally agree with Republicans. So Republicans and neoliberal Democrats say, oh, this is nothing the businesses can do. The poor businesses, they're the ones that are suffering. It's economic forces and your wages are too high. And that's what's causing inflation. Now, that could be true, by the way. Of course, sometimes the price of supplies go up and then you, at that point, you might not make a profit anymore. So is that the case in this? Situation, nope, both for Kroger's and Albertsons and by the way, almost all of the industries, none of them are showing losses. They're all showing not only profits, record profits. But wait, if inflation was causing it, they'd be in dire straits. And they'd be like, we we don't have a choice, I have to increase the price, otherwise I'm losing money. And if I lose enough money, I'll go bankrupt. But that's not the situation at all. Correct. They're making record profits. 
And they're bragging openly saying, yeah, the people will take the price increase. Why? Why are the people going to take the price increase? Number one, they have an oligopoly. Yeah, they have no choice. So they have no choice at all on two fronts. One, in a place like LA, for example, almost every store, superstore, uh, supermarket is Rouse uh, and Vons and Pavilions. So first of all, these they would merge, then you would have a monopoly and not an oligopoly. You would have no choice at all. But right now, you basically have only two choices. It's these companies that work together all the time. They set very similar prices yes. so that you have the illusion of choice without actually having. Why didn't they acquire all those companies that Anna mentioned? Why didn't they change their names? Because they like the illusion yes. of choice. Yes, the illusion okay. of choice is really important to like, grasp when it comes to capitalism. Because what we usually hear about when it comes to, let's say, a communist system like in Cuba. One of my favorite memes that goes around by right wingers is a grocery store aisle in Cuba. I forget what the product is, but there's one brand. You have no other choice, one brand. But you look at the major corporations that basically have all these brands within their umbrella, they might have like different branding for the same product, but it's the same company making the product. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So like we have the illusion of choice here in the United States, whereas you know in in Cuba it's like, or in a communist country where there's one brand, it's like no, this is this is the reality of the situation. You got one brand. But either way, <laughs> either way, it's bad. The prices are the same. Yeah. Right. Yep. So uh, now, uh, in terms of. Again, there's a second factor in why you have no choice. One is it's an oligopoly. Two is the government. The government in, is never held accountable because moneyed interests have completely seized the government, including, most importantly, it's not people, it's not people of a particular race or ethnicity. No, it is corporations. They have completely controlled our government. So that's why their CEOs brazenly go out on calls and go, we have them under complete control. There's nothing they could do. We're passing on the prices to them. We're super comfortable. Their representatives are our servants, right? They didn't mention that part, but it's super obvious. Mm -hmm. And so there's no way they could ever fight back. They brag. Now, last thing about inflation. Um, so when they merge, one of the CEOs has to go. One of them will uh, stay and run the company. But it turns out it's- um, I've got those numbers. Yes, so that, Anna, read the numbers and then I'm gonna make a comment about it. That golden parachute is mm. real sweet, real sweet. So uh, the merger would hurt average Americans and obviously make the ultra wealthy even richer. Kroger CEO uh, Rodney McMullen would take over as CEO of the combined company if the merger goes through. But Albertson's CEO, uh, Vivek Senkaran, stands to gain a $50 million golden parachute in the deal. Meanwhile, Albertson's parent company, private equity giant Cerebrus Capital Management, will earn a windfall too, perhaps as much as $7 billion. So if the inflation was actually causing the uh, the price hikes, you'd never be able to extract $7 billion from grocery stores. So grocery stores would be the most affected, they'd be most on the razor's edge of sustainability, right? This is just business 101. They're not anywhere near the razor's edge. They're taking $7 billion out in bounty because they're like, good, inflation. We get to charge more and there's nothing they can do about it, right? And the only one, of course, fighting on this is Bernie Sanders saying it's the price gouging yep. and everybody of course the world is collapsing in on him because all of the almost all the media is owned by corporations not just the ha corporate hacks like CNN Fox News what do you think they are they're a giant corporation they're part of the same propaganda they're like don't listen to Bernie Sanders inflation is really bad but it's not the companies it's your fault the wages are too high they're liars finally on the 50 million dollars at least on this portion of the story um guys if they were hurting and they had to pass on the price increases to you. Do you think they'd have $50 million lying around to give someone who's leaving? They don't have to give him anything. They're choosing to give him $50 million gift on his way out because they're like, nice job, basically totally exploiting the customers. Mm -hmm. And so allowing this would be mental. You cannot let them merge. There's good news on that front, though. Yeah, the good news is, and this was actually a shocking statistic to me, uh, for me, because of how pro corporate uh, this country really is. But it turns out that somewhere between 70 to 90% of proposed mergers actually fail. So the antitrust division of our government apparently is doing an okay job, but when you take a 
step back and you look at some of the biggest mergers over the last uh, few decades, they've been pretty devastating in terms of prices and inflation for the American people. So I, I, I can't imagine how many proposed mergers they're dealing with on a regular basis uh, to get a percentage that high. But it's really important for this particular merger to fail. Yeah, so there's a lot of nuance there real yeah. quick. A lot of the smaller ones fail, uh, the giant corporations basically own the government, except for the FTC under Biden. So we often criticize Biden, I don't think he does enough. But man, he picked someone great for the FTC, it's Lena Khan. And she's against monopolies, she's said that so many monopolies that are dangerous and overly large should be blocked. And she's very likely to block this one. Unfortunately, there's always a bad turn, right? Um, she's not the final voice, she's the penultimate voice. The final voice is the courts. And so the courts, uh, of course, are completely c controlled by corporations. Again, corporate media never told you that. I write all about it in my upcoming book, justicecomingbook.com, about how they captured the courts. And so the courts keep going, no, I don't see any monopolies. You got anybody see a monopoly? They own 60% of the market. I don't see it, uh, we're good. Almost all the people on the courts were selected because they were in favor of giant corporations. They were picked by corrupt Republicans and oftentimes corrupt Democrats uh, to do just that. So Lena Khan will def almost certainly strike this down, then it'll go to the courts. This one is so egre egregious that even the courts might say, no, no, you can't do this one. But you gotta cross your fingers on that one. It, the courts are so pro-corporate. Uh, and, and it might go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the most pro corporate. Absolutely, yes. And, and a couple of the Supreme Court justices, remember, were picked because they allowed corporations to kill their employees. Literally. Literally, okay. And so if it goes all the way to the Supreme Court, they might be like, oh, I love it. Why can't they get 100% of the market? Right? So, so the jury's still out on this overall. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. So really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.